Yoo hoo! Yeah, you know who it is. Yup, I got my man, Geraldini, big Gerald McCoy, in the house today, waking you up with a dose. Gerald, what's happening, baby? Ready to rock! <laughs> Wake up! <laughs> Wake up! Let's go. Th that should be the dose right there, but no. Hey, guys, this is going to be a special dose of Durkin. Um, Gerald McCoy is a special human being, guys. He's been playing for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for nine years. He's a six-time Pro Bowler. He's been coming out here to San Diego for seven years. And uh, here's a guy that literally hops on a plane every week, comes out and trains, gets back to his family of four, you know, and it's just it's crazy the commitment this man has to be great. So, gee, a couple questions here. Mm -hmm. I love studying success and significance, all these mm -hmm. things. Um, you know, nine years in the league, what have been some of the key things that allowed you to excel and stay at the top for such a long period of time? Well, for me, you always have to find a way to find that edge. So every year in the NFL, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you something, you can't do the same things every year and expect to be successful because everybody knows who you are. You have to find a way to be your, reinvent yourself every year. Still be you, but reinvent yourself every year. And that gives you a way to stay on top. That gives you an edge. So my training is not the same every year. I have the same intensity, but based off last season's production and the negativity, I build my workout around it. So before I come out here to San Diego, I always give Todd a text or I give him a call and say, hey, this off season, this is our focus. Because I know this is what I need to do to keep that edge. And always remember this. It's easier to stay in shape than get in shape. <laughs> That's the truth. Man, I always talk about that. It's one thing to get to the top. It's another thing to stay on top. I remember when LaDainey and Tomlinson mm -hmm. was training. You know, you get the MVP of the league. How do you, how do you stay on top? How do you right. stay hungry? And, you know, with Drew now for umpteen years training and, and being at a high level. Uh, how, do you, how do you stay at that? What keeps you hungry? Well, here's the thing. For me, I know that this gift I have to play this game is not mine. Mm -hmm. I don't own it. It was a gift from God. I was blessed to be able to do this. So anytime I lack, anytime I slack, anytime I take a playoff, anytime I take a rep off, or I take it easy, I am, for me, I feel like I'm disrespecting God mm -hmm. and not giving my all, which is basically disrespecting the talents and gifts I've been given. But not only that, there's a draft every year. There's a, a kid right now that's in high school that's watching Gerald McCoy that's saying, you know what, one day I'm going to be where he's at and past him. So in order for me to stay on top, I have to realize that I can't just be the best in my room. I can't just be mm -hmm. the best in my conference. I can't be the best in my division. I have to be the best, period. And you have to work to be the best. You have to, after you finish your workout, if you feel inside that, your opposition may have done more than you, may have outworked you today. You need right. to go back. That's right. And I keep that same focus year in and year out because um, once I lack, once I stop, my body goes shut down. <laughs> Let's just be honest. So you just got to keep it going as long as you can, man. Now, I'm not. If I'm not mistaken, uh, this is your. We just got done with your ninth workout of the mm -hmm. week. Nine. Yeah. Nine workouts this week yeah. because he's doing training here. We're on the field. We're doing boxing. He's doing Pilates. He's all in on the commitment. Absolutely. But Gerald said something important I want to address because maybe you're not a pro athlete listening in today. You, you know, he said hard work beats talent when talent don't work, essentially. And if you're not an athlete, it doesn't matter what you're in and what you do. It doesn't matter if you're a 10-year-old watching this or, or you're a 60-year-old uh, or an 85-year-old. You know, you got to work hard regardless of what talent you have. And everyone has talent, so you got to keep you know, working through that and on that. You know, one of the adversities that you've had in Tampa Bay over nine years, you've had, what, four coaches and mm -hmm. several GMs. Mm -hmm. how, has that, how has that impacted you one way or the other? Well, for me, um, personally, I feel what I've had to do is, um, because every coach, every GM that comes in is not going to be a fan of everybody. They're not going to want to keep everybody. So what I've had to realize, what I need to do is be myself within whatever the scheme or idea of this new coach is. Yep. And you don't have to change who you are. If you're leading the right way, if you're doing things the right way, they will see it and they will know this is a guy I need around. Mm -hmm. Because the better I am, the better I lead, the more guys that gravitate to me then it becomes contagious. Mm -hmm. And then a coach in the GM says, you know what? 
I need that guy. I need him in the locker room. I need him on the field. I need him everywhere in this building if we're going to go to where we want to go. And, that's, and right. that's just that's what I've done. That's always been my focus, and it's going to continue to be my focus. Hey, that's contagiasm, contagious enthusiasm. That creates culture. You want to re- create a, a winning culture in the locker room, in a business, it starts with the leaders. It starts with the folks that are in the trenches training or the top players. On that, it takes meticulous attention to detail on training, on mindset, and all those things. If you could share with, let's say, a young athlete that maybe isn't the star of the team, mm-hmm. someone that really wants to be a starter or make the varsity, what would be some mental tips that you would give to that that boy or girl that strives to be great, but they're not there yet? They're not where they want to be. Right. Um, there's a saying that uh, Mike Tchaikovsky from Duke, Coach K, he said, he said, I'll take a two-star athlete with a five-star work ethic mm. over a five-star athlete mm. with a two-star work ethic. Just because a person has God-given talent doesn't mean they're going to make it. Mm. Don't take no for an answer. Mm. I always tell young kids, I always tell anybody, this is what I do, and this is what I tell people to do. Stay away from dream killers. you got to put yourself in a hallway. If you look at the end of most hallways of a hotel or anything, mm. there's usually a window <laughs> at the end of that hallway, and there's light shining through. Well, on the right, there's doors. On the left, there's doors. Those are your distractions. Those are the things that come to get in your way. That right door is going to open. That left door is going to open. Don't look to your right. Don't look to your left. Don't go in that door. Don't go in that door. Mm-hmm. Your goal is at the end. Whatever Preach comes it. to Preach get it. in your way to Preach get to it. that light at the end of the hallway, go through it. Mm. Don't look to your right at that distraction. Don't look to your left. And always remember this. Everybody's path is different. Mm-hmm. Everybody's path is not like this. This if you look at a measure of success, most people put a chart mm-hmm. and it looks like a straight line. Well, really, the chart should look like this. Yep. As long as you're going up, you're going in the right direction. Woo! Deep. The genie's getting deep today. All right, last couple questions. Favorite exercise that you love to do? My favorite exercise is walking because you can do it out the door after you know, <laughs> training is over. <laughs> Ew, I love it. Favorite exercise is walking. There you go, moms and dads, grandmas and grandpas. Yeah. I like Anybody that. Walking out walk. the door after a great hard workout. Anybody can walk. Favorite quote or verse uh, that kind of drives you to be who you are? Um, Isaiah fifty four seventeen. Uh, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. So um, the enemy... Satan, the devil, comes to kill, steal, and destroy uh, anything Mm. that God has placed on this earth for his glory. So anything that comes my way to throw me off my path, to throw me on my true purpose on this earth, can't faze me. Because if if God is for me, who can be against me? Mm. And that's that's how I live. And I truly believe that. You know, that no weapon formed against me shall prosper because God is my refuge. He's my safe place. He's my... (laughs) <laughs> my protector, and uh, as long as God is with me, can't be touched. So some of us in they hear that, they're probably like, man, Gerald's got all together, his faith is it's mm-hmm. so strong, and you know he's in the NFL. But when you when you face adversity during a season, in the off season, and traveling, mm-hmm. and, and everything, how do you truly believe that? Because yeah. you know what I'm saying, like the season's going away, or you get hurt. How do you believe that when the cards are against you? Well. Here, here's why, here's why um, God blesses those who, who have faith because faith is the belief in things unseen. So when you have faith, you're basically believing something you can't see, but you believe so much that it's possible that it's going to happen. When it does happen, it's going to blow your mind. You have to understand the reason I am the way I am, I don't have it all together. I haven't always had it all together. I've, I've had many struggles. I've, had, I've faced tons of adversity. But the Bible says that God blesses us in our time of comfort so we can bless those with the comfort that we have received. So the reason I am the way I am is because I have received so much comfort from God. And I have believed. I have kept the faith. I have finished the race. And I've seen God's glory and how good he is. You just have to keep that faith. Do not stop. I always tell my kids, don't ever let another person, man or woman, determine Mm -hmm. what happens with you. 
Mm. So Appreciate when you're feeling, oh, it just feels like I don't stop. Don't stop. That's right. Because when you stop, mm. how are you ever going to see what can happen if you stop? That's right. And always remember this. The same way you're feeling, there's other people feeling that way. So when they're stopping and you don't, mm. that's just eliminating the competition. Just keep going. Do not stop. Wow. Folks, so when you're watching the NFL, I know you guys have your favorite players, but why do the D linemen never get the love that they deserve? <laughs> I mean, here's one of the best guys in the NFL, not only as a player, but as a man. And we need more godly men like Gerald McCoy, number 93 of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Follow him. When the TV is on, don't watch the ball. Watch what's happening right over the line of scrimmage and watch what he does. Watch how he carries himself in good times and bad times because this is a leader amongst men. This is a leader in the community. You know, Gerald, you've shared with me before, like, football doesn't define you. So I'm going to leave with this question. Your legacy. Mm -hmm. Like, people like, oh, Gerald McCoy is a great, he's an all-pro football player. But knowing you for so many years, right. that doesn't just define you. You use football as a platform mm -hmm. for your legacy. What is your legacy? What's your well, impact? Here's what I truly believe. I'm going to tell you my biggest fear, and I'm going to tell you what I believe. What I believe is football is not who I am. It's what I do. Mm. I've been given a gift to play it, and when God gives us gifts, we're supposed to maximize those gifts. And the gift I have to play this game, I do my best to maximize it, but it's just the, it just gives me a platform for my true purpose. And my biggest fear is that when I'm gone from the NFL or this earth, the bit, biggest thing I'll be remembered for is being a football player. Mm. That's not why I was put here. I wasn't put here to be a football player. I was mm. put here to reach souls, to change lives, to bring us together. Too much now in the world, not just America, in the world we're doing this. When are we going to start doing this? Mm. That's what I believe my purpose is, is for my small area that I can reach, I want to rub off on if it's just one. If I can just change one person's life, mm. true success mm. to me is when you can maximize your potential and get somebody else to maximize theirs based off what they see from you. Ooh. If I can get another person to maximize their potential because of what I've done, then I'm successful. That's significant right there. You talk about bringing people together, right? Like And bringing them together so you can create that significance. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? Like, how do you take the people that are struggling, that are downtrodden, that are that are in a depressed mind state? They're they're. How do you bring them together? You got to be selfless, and you got to be willing to go anywhere because people don't realize when you talk about Jesus and where he was at. Go read the Bible. Really look and read the stories. He wasn't with the rich. He wasn't with the people who had it all together. He was where the prostitutes were, where the people who mm. were down and out were. That's where you got to go. Don't go to the easy. <laughs> don't go. Don't be water. And water takes the least path, the, the easiest path of the uh, least resistance. Least resistance. Don't be water. <laughs> <laughs> don't be water. Go the hard route. Go reach those souls. Go find those people. They need Speaking you. Of water. You need some water. I know. He's working up a third sweat of the they day here. You. He's so passionate about this stuff. He's working up his sweat. So, guys, there you have it. Gerald McCoy, way beyond just the football player, the soul revealed. I talk about success and significance and impact all the time. I talk about legacy. I challenge you today to go deep. And, and uh, what Gerald said is, you know, you, we all have gifts, but we have to work our talents. And we've got to work our tails off and surround ourselves with people that are going to uh, really lift us up. I love the analogy of the hallway with the distraction. I talk about thoroughbreds all the time with blinders on so they can focus on what they see. It's not easy traveling from the East Coast to the West Coast every week to come out here and, and train his tail off so that he can capitalize on the gifts that he's been bestowed so he can use that as a platform because even after you reach a certain level of success sometimes your biggest success traps are the hardest ones to get out of right so um, wherever you're at today I challenge you to be your best and to go deep inside your soul and uh, you know as Gerald said when you think about all the things that you have inside of you is it's your responsibility to go out that and share that with the world Gerald Social media, if someone, if you got some new fans out here, mm -hmm. where's the best place besides ESPN <laughs> or CBS uh, or Fox to watch you? Where can they take a look at some of the stuff that you're uh, letting out? Um, 
Instagram, Twitter, all my stuff is Geraldini 93. G E R A L D I N I 93. Geraldini, I'm Geraldini 93 everywhere. On Snapchat, I'm Geraldini 405. <laughs> What's the superhero stuff all about? You're always wearing Batman, Superman, Oh, yeah, bet read that. <laughs> what does it say? I'm not lazy. I'm secretly Batman. Batman. And I was up all night fighting crime. <laughs> <laughs> that does it right there. Uh, Batman in disguise, Gerald McCoy. Thanks for being here. Yes, Guys, I love doing these interviews. The Dose of Durkin is simply to get your mind right, to motivate and inspire you to live your best life. And Gerald McCoy certainly is a man of impact. Watch him, follow him, do what he's doing, because it's going to help you be the best version of yourself. Peace. We out.